so, 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 in fact, Genevieve came to me one time and she said, Keith, I, I want to sell my trike website. And actually, she was sort of the impetus of this whole movement. Right. And when she first came to me, she said, Keith, I want to sell my website. I don't really want very much money for it. Um, I just, I just want to sell it. I, I can't do it. And I, I said to her, I want another website like I want a hole in the head. Right. She said, I know how much work a website is. So to try to do two, forget it. But what I discovered was that was during the time after the economic downturn. There was a lot of guys out of work. And I thought, you know, and actually another, uh, another guy came to me and said he thought he was going to lose his job. And I thought, so I went back to Jen and I said, okay, maybe we'll buy your website because I could get a team of guys to run the trike and the bagger website and to help guys who were out of work. That's what a lot, I'm telling you, man, if everybody would think like that, we'd get out of the rut real quick, you know what I mean? So, so we were actually able to give two or three guys some kind of employment um, and actually more guys because, you know, we'll be buying stories from people. And, and uh, so it's actually, it, believe me, it's a lot of work because now I'm kind of managing all these sites. And, and although I don't have to, actually Buck Lavelle, who was with American Cycle and American Bagger, he's now our editor for uh, Biker Net Baggers. And Gary Mraz, uh, Madaz, he says, my huh. name is Madaz. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's our editor, but he's our main sales guy uh, also for the Biker Net Trikes. And, uh, and so now we got a whole crew, and, and although they're all learning how the site works and, and how things, it's, uh, it's working, you know, and it's exciting. And um, and I'm able to help out a bunch of guys. Well, I tell you what, you got me. You got me bit by the bug. I, <laughs> uh, you know, I started writing songs about all you guys, and I started filming stuff. And I go, man, if I really want to help preserve history, I need to get this stuff on that new internet thing and all that stuff. And you know, of course, though, I I came and talked to you about it and asked you if it was cool to do. I mean, see, that's the thing about uh, our culture and brotherhood and stuff. You know, I mean, uh, this stuff on TV, some of these guys, uh, the guys uh, quit the club, and now he's starting another club, and then, and then, and then, and they don't get it, man. I mean, you know, it, I mean, you know, it's it's a free country. Anybody can just start a website, but, you know, if you have respect and honor for the people that uh, started things before you, you know, that's the way uh, you're supposed to do things and go about things, and, you know, I want to keep the flame going, man. I like Rogue, too. I mean, you guys... A lot of you guys uh, are my mentors. I, I learned a lot of stuff from you guys. And, uh, well, I wouldn't have wrote a song about you. Well, I guess I would have because it's a good song. <laughs> five times married, five balls, I had to write a song, you know. and uh, It's a great song, yeah. Yeah, well, that, we made history with that, too. Uh, Mickey Jones came and uh, laid the drums on that. And that, for God's sakes, he was the drummer for Bob Dylan, <laughs> you know. And so, I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, it was unbelievable. So, uh, really? so anyway, uh now uh, you also are author of some books and uh, and some other endeavors too, right? Sure, sure. No, I've uh, I've written about a half a dozen books, and and uh, I, you know I love writing motorcycle fiction. In fact, a buddy of mine said that the other day. He said, Keith, he said, just take one of your books and turn it into a western. He said you'll probably become a real popular western writer. Yeah. And and I said and I thought to myself, I thought. You know, that's, that's probably true. And what he, he went on to say that he says, obviously, these shows are real popular. So bikers watch television, but they don't read books. Right. We're not. Yeah. I, well, I read you. I read. I'm telling you, it's so getting. You're like the, the dude that told the future because uh, the one where the, the bike's quiet and uh, no more, you know, the motor don't. Uh, that's uh, by the time I get on the porch. I'll be like Wyatt Earp. I'll be on the porch a uh, hundred years old going, ah, damn son of a bitch. And all of a sudden I'll see a bike go by and it'll just go, S -s -s -s. <laughs> and and I'll remember the days when we, they used to go, -d 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 -d, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's kind of like Wyatt Earp when he, he lived to, to the ripe old age where he got to see the horseless carriage, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm wondering what he thought when he first seen that, like, what the hell is this? Oh, you can imagine. Can you imagine you ride your horse home one day? And 
a guy goes by you on a JD. Right. And your horse absolutely freaks out. Yeah. Never oh. heard anything in the world like this explosion that's going by you. Well, you wrote that book a while back, and it's it's coming to pass, man. I can see that actually happening where... The Sam Orwell book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can actually see that happening where I'm on the porch looking back at my life, and uh, yeah. all of a sudden here comes the quiet bike go by. Well, and there's absolutely people out there that just think that motorcycles are like horses. They're done. Yeah. And they, they need to be banned. You know, that what was it? It was like two or three years ago, a country in Europe, <laughs> they decided they, they were going to have this program, and they were going to make it a, zero, a year of zero deaths on the highway. So they sat down, and they had a committee meeting, and they said, well, how do we, how do we accomplish this? And somebody in the back raised their hand, and they said, the only way you're going to accomplish this is to ban motorcycles. We've wow. got to get rid of motorcycles. So they said, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing on our list. We're going to ban motorcycles. And they actually, they actually went out in public and said, yep, I think we got to ban motorcycles. Yeah, people got to tell you it's unbelievable, man. And Raised hell, and that went away. And actually, there's a woman who works for a company called FEMA um, in uh, Europe, and she's absolutely, I think her name is Irene or... Um, She's absolutely amazing, and when she gets up and talks about motorcycle safety, she turns the plate completely upside down. Instead of being all about motorcycles, wearing helmets, and, and uh, you know, wearing fluorescent vests and things yeah. like that, she turns it completely upside down, that it's really the responsibility of the people who build the roads, people who build the barriers in the roads. That's the way to go. Uh, the, uh, the distracted drivers, uh, a motorcycle awareness, she puts it all on them, which is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is, man. It's, it's yeah. you know, psychology. I mean... Uh, yeah, because that's the way it is. A, mo a motorcycle helmet is never going to save you from an accident. Well, it's just like when I go play, uh, like in Milwaukee and different places with uh, other clubs and I get around. I, my, my thing is I go, well, it's going to look really bad on your resume to beat up the little guitar player. <laughs> It seems to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it works for you. And so far, so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, you survived this long. Yeah, well, I had a couple of tough ones with Tony uh, Pan out there at the Outlaw Clubhouse, but it seemed to work out okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Tony, what a great guy. Yeah, he is, man. And uh, I mean, those, those people, they're the heart and soul of motorcycling in, in Milwaukee, you know. Yeah, Tony takes good care of me. I got, he ride his motorcycle and everything when I'm out there, and the people are such nice people over there, man. You know, it's just uh, and of course Dave Zine. Oh, Dave! Wow, I see, he was in Daytona. I got to see him. He's got that trike, the trike now. You know, and uh, boy, he's gonna just ride till till talk about riding until the wheels fall off. Yeah, Woo! yeah, yeah. He'll ride till there are no more wheels. Right. Hey, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh. How you got inducted into the Sturgis Hall of Fame? How, how did that feel for you? I mean, I know it had to feel wonderful. I mean, oh yeah, you what know, an that honor! It's amazing. I, I was, uh, I, you know, I was really surprised. I, I didn't see it coming, but uh, um, you know, I, I, what can I say? I appreciate that uh, that acknowledgement. Um, I appreciate, you know, I really appreciate being in an industry. And this is sort of odd to say because the motorcycle industry has really been hit hard by the economy. Uh, all the custom manufacturers are out of business now. Um, you know, you, you can't sell a chopper for any – where you used to make money selling choppers, you can't do that anymore. Um, but but still, we're doing what we love, you know, and we, and we do what's, what's in our heart. And you can't beat it to be able to get up every day and – work on motorcycles and write about motorcycles and, and do things to help motorcyclists, do things to help motorcycle rights. I meant to be able to do all that kind of thing and somehow eke out a living is is yeah. amazing. And then to be recognized for it, uh, you know, by uh, uh, a, a deal like the uh, Sturgis Hall of Fame, yeah. I meant that was just incredible. I was there. I filmed it, man. I, I had a tear in my eye for you. I remember standing up and Willie G was there and I said, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I got to give my mom credit and they all laughed and I said, my mom, uh, um, that, remember that 50cc uh, Honda I had? Well, I uh, parked it out in front of the house one day and my mother ran over it. <laughs> I 
remember that. And, and she came in the house and she said, get that fucking, she didn't yeah. say fucking. Oh, you can curse on, it's underground, you can say whatever you want, that's why I love this show. Yeah, but she, she said, get that goddamn motorcycle out from under my station wagon. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, me playing the guitar and writing songs about everybody, uh, I'm going to Russia. Uh, I'm doing a big old motorcycle rally July 1st over in Moscow, and they got a bike for me to ride and everything over there. You know, that's that's incredible. And some of the events over there, it's, it's really wild that they'll have an event over there in Germany and 300,000 people will come to it. Yeah, they love us, man. They love our bikes. They love, a, they love the whole thing about us. You know, it's pretty damn cool. They'll come to a bike show like that. I'll never forget, I went to the Epson Motor Show. Now, that was all sorts of, uh, uh, of motorcycles and cars and things like that. And that thing was open for for a week, and it drew like 385,000 people. Yeah. Boy, I, I, I'm sure uh, Joe over there at Easy Riders would love to see 300,000 people come yeah. to one of his bike shows. Well, there's a lot of my friends, uh, including Rogue and everybody, saying... Uh, I might get my big break going over there to Russia, you know. I mean, might hook up a lot of cool stuff for me over there. You never know. You never know. There are actors who are top of the heap in Europe and can't get a job over here. Yeah, well, there's a. am going to be, after I do the, the main motorcycle rally, uh, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to send my band home, and me and, and Dennis are going to stay, and I'm going to be playing uh, the blue circuit at the clubs uh, with the top Russian rock star piano guy oh great and he sent me a youtube right mm -hmm. and he can play the shit out of that piano right mm -hmm. so i turn it on i'm start listening then he started singing he goes just let the door records off the shelf i have rather listen to him and i was going boy they gonna wait till good time charlie gets over to russia <laughs> <laughs> you know i hope it works out for you, you oh know, boy oh that i want to live in russia but yeah, no, I, I don't want to live there, but I definitely, uh, they already got it set up for me to go play again next year in tour, so. Oh, that's amazing, Charles. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. And, you know, I was thinking about you earlier, and I was thinking how, how attitude, attitude is everything. And, and you've got a great attitude, and you've got a lot of heart, and you work your ass off, and so, you know, God damn it, I hope it comes around for you. Thank you, Keith. Well, and I want to thank you for helping us uh, promote the, the the motorcycle that Danny Ray built. Uh, the Sturgis, a lot, we're selling a lot of tickets. Oh, good. And, and uh, not only that, but uh, we're going to showcase it uh, August 3rd. And if, you, if you're in Sturgis, man, I'd love you to come to the show and come on stage with us and everything. But we're going to showcase it the whole nine days at the Sturgis Museum to sell more tickets and then give it away to last night at the Buffalo Chip. Uh, terrific. Well, um, my uh, my effort this year is uh, actually I'm helping a buddy of mine build a world class Bonneville Racing 124 inch turbocharged twin cam. Cool. That's We're gonna take it to Bonneville and. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to tell the folks about. Uh, you do a lot of cool stuff over at the Salt, salt Flats and all. And I, I was telling people earlier about the uh, assault weapon, and, uh, weapon, pan, and uh, the, yeah. we, we had the Playboy Bunny there, and uh, we just had a great old time. We had the band, we kicked out the jams. Uh, we kind of had like our own little Jay Leno show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, the Bonneville's. Uh, I actually I went to the uh, Mojave Mile this last weekend. And we went out there with a buddy who's got a 1,000cc uh, Honda sport bike, and he's got it all tuned up and dialed in. And there was a whole bunch of Hayabusa's out there, and they were all running, they were all running uh, 200 miles an hour. But they had a 40-mile-an-hour tailwind on Saturday. And the, t the wind was gone on Sunday when we went there, and everybody ran 10 miles an hour slower. But the Mojave Mile is an amazing place because, you know, you don't have to, you're not dealing with salt. Right. Uh, you're not dealing with quite the elevation uh, and, uh, you know, the air quality and things like that. And, and because you're on a, on a uh, plain, uh, a plain track, you know, a, uh, an airfield, oh, it was amazing. Ex except that once in a while they'd have to say, hold it, hold it. Yeah. Go race it for 15 minutes. we got to land an airplane. Wow. <laughs> and actually, this is sort of the graveyard of old airlines.
airliners. They take old airliners. Oh, yeah, I've seen that on TV. And refurbish them, but they also build test airplanes up there. Wow. And they have that Virgin Atlantic um, test airplane that's like two airplanes welded together that they're going to do flights into space with. That's so cool, man. Hey, you know, I'm gonna give, I'll give you a big plug over at the Redwood Run. I'm headlining Friday night. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm playing. Uh, it's going to be a, a tribute to Ronnie Montrose at 430. Yeah. And then Pat Travis. And then Lucas Nelson, Willie's Kid. And then I come on at 11 p.m., baby, prime time. Wow. Now, will you be out in the, uh, out in the camping area? Yeah, well, it's it, they brought it back to Percy. It's uh, the whole thing got last year it was uh, at a new place, but they they finally worked out their differences in the MMAs helping with security like the old days and all that stuff, and uh, they uh, moved it back to the uh, back where it belongs. So, but I'll I'll definitely uh, uh I'll do a song or two, and then I'll I'll give you a nice plug over there. Okay, well I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, so tell the folks a little bit about what uh, you got. Uh, you got the cantina and all, uh, some of the stuff you got on your website, and let's get some folks over there and uh, and, and become members and stuff. Well, I, I appreciate that. You know, Bandit's Cantina is our private area. It's got topless girls in it, and it's got uh, it's got entire books. You can read entire books in there. Um, it's got some really exotic antique motorcycles. We try to keep the keep the creme de la creme, the the really wild stuff like. Stuff that you won't ever see any place else is in the cantina, and then we do a little Sunday news every week, um, and uh, we have the girls of Bikernet, and and you can actually watch one of my books come together because as I write a chapter, I drop it into the cantina. That's cool. And I got <laughs> actually I got guys that that bug me. They say, hey, hey, where's the next chapter? God damn it! So get to work, you know. <laughs> so so that's what's in the cantina, but then. Then the 90% of BikerNet is free, and it's bike features and tech articles and and uh, event coverage, you name it. It's the cream of the crop. And, uh, folks, BikerNet.com, please go check it out. Uh, I'm always talking about it while I'm on, on my show because it's, uh, it's a really cool place to go, man, where you don't have to go to the magazine place. And, uh, you know, although, hey, I... I'm not trying to knock any of that either. I mean, everybody, we need to support everybody. But uh, exactly. anyway, uh, Keith, it's an honor to be your friend, and I love you, dude. And when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Charlie. Yeah. How tall are you? I'm a little short, dude. I'm 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five, seven. I say, you know, when, I, when a guy looks at me and says, God, you're so tall, man. I wish I was tall like you. I say, listen, you short guys, you'll live longer than me. Well, I don't know. I don't think you. I think you're gonna be around a while. You're pretty healthy, and uh, yeah, I try I, to stay healthy. But you sure, guys, you're, you're more compact. Your heart doesn't have to work as hard. Hey, you'll live longer. God damn it. Well, you know, and uh, I tell you my secret here. If you wanna, uh, you know how girls sit down to pee. Yeah. I figured uh, that's why they live longer than us. We're always rushing, jumping. There, they rest. They rest a lot. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna start trying this little sit down thing when I'm at, at least when I'm at home. And so I think that added another five years to my life, you know? Well, you know, I think your missus, she'll keep it. <laughs> well, and then I don't, hey, I don't have to wipe up the pee on the floor when my wife comes home, too, so I'm pretty... No, I got, she's the greatest. Yeah, oh, she is too much, man. She, uh, right now, uh, she, uh, if it wasn't for her, my band wouldn't get booked. Uh, my emails, you know, I can't spell cat. I mean, she does all that cool stuff for me. Yeah, she's the greatest. Hey, uh, you're old lady, too, man, uh... You know, I. She keeps things going. Yeah, she does, man. Well, I love you, brother, and thank you for coming on my show. All right, and uh, I thank you. also I recorded this, so uh, uh, it's 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 probably about almost uh, half an hour long, but I can cut it up in some pieces, put some pictures. I'll send it over to you, and you, I'll make some YouTube's out of it. You got it. And I'll send them over to you. And thank you for helping us with the Sturgis bike, man. Uh, I, from what I hear, they're already breaking ground, or they found the place. So. We, we are getting another building. That's what we need. Yeah, I talked to Christine yesterday. Cool, brother. I love you, okay? Right, Folks, too, the legendary Keith Ball, and uh, an honor to have you on the show. I love you, brother. Keep your rubber side down. You got it. All right.